In this video, I want to go through a little bit about how we can represent complex numbers, and there's really two different representations we can use. So one representation is going to be the one we use the most, which is in fact going to be this sort of representation, where we have two terms, one explicitly has an i in it. When we write a number this way, this is assuming that a and b are real. So a different type of representation we can use is in the complex plane. So this is like a polar representation where we're thinking about the real and imaginary coordinates. So real and imaginary. When we can represent the same number in these two different forms. So this is like saying this is a and this is b and our number is here. Another way to represent it is that our number has this magnitude and this angle. So two different ways you can think of this as like Cartesian and polar in this complex plane. So if we want just the real part, here it would be a, what do we do here? So here it's not r and it's not theta. We have to think about this triangle. And in fact, the real component of this, if we think about this as now being an angle, it would be the adjacent side. So this is in fact r cosine of theta. If we want the imaginary part, here it's b, nice and easy, but here it's going to be r sine theta, right? This opposite side. So another way of writing out z, and it's kind of a way of combining these two uh, together that's going to be really helpful, is that it is r cos theta plus i r sine theta. So again, we have this um, uh, real term and then explicitly the imaginary term. And so then this is the same as A and this is the same as B. So you can go back and forth between these two different forms. Now this one might be more familiar, you might be more comfortable with it. This one's actually better for working with complex conjugates because if we want to have the complex conjugate of Z, so Z star, that would be A minus bi. Then when we're multiplying it out, we have a bunch of stuff. Notice for the complex conjugate in terms of this polar, since r is real, nothing happens there, and this is e to the minus i theta. So this form is going to be a lot easier when we're looking at interference terms. This form is going to be a lot harder. So if you can become comfortable with this polar form, that's going to be much better for certain uh, calculations we'll do in this class.